My name is Vincent Martin and I'm currently a PhD student at Georgia Tech in Human Centered Computing. Assistive technology is really wide and varied, but it's also everywhere. It's now ubiquitous. It's sitting right in front of you and you don't know it. 95% of us in America now that are adults have a smartphone or a tablet. Every last one of those smartphones and tablets have assistive technology built into them. As it is with people with all types of disabilities, people with the same disability also access information differently. For example, I'm totally blind and I primarily utilize my computers and I say that because I have five or six different computers with different operating systems and I utilize them different ways. I access a lot using a variety of screen reading programs with hardware and software based synthesizers. Other people with different disabilities may utilize their various types of assistive technology differently. Our technology for equal access. Sensory impairments. I'm Eric and um, I have a visual impairment called Stargardt's and it's a macular degeneration which affects the center of my vision so it makes it really hard to read, read fine print and see details. Um, so I use the sides of my eyes to see more in the periphery. Zoom text enabled. The main piece of assistive technology that I use um, on the computer is Zoom text, which is a screen magnifier that allows me to make everything on the computer screen as big or as small as I need it, depending upon what I'm reading. Um, there's also a built-in screen reader on Zoom text, which I can also use to help read documents um, because my eyes get tired really easily. I use a closed caption TV monitor that I have on my desk that allows me to see the board and what is being projected on the board by the teacher. Hi, um, I'm Mike. My disability is that I am visually impaired. Um, I can see things up close, but for the way it gets blurry. I use a whole bunch of different technologies in my daily life. Um, my smartphone works brilliantly for what I need it to. Um, it has a whole bunch of different apps on it that will help me in my day-to-day -day life. Um, I have Voice Stream Reader, which is a uh, an input app, so you can switch over different types of media, and it will allow it to be read aloud to me. Lyceum Lyceum Tuesday July 19th 2000 1650 p.m. And that's what the sign says. Scanning is very important for somebody with a visual impairment because there are a lot of printed materials in the world in general that are very not visually impaired friendly or not blind friendly. Hi, um, my name is Jesse, and I'm a fourth, a fourth year student at the University of Washington, majoring in informatics with a minor in diversity. And I, uh, I, I get to find myself as SCAF. So, on the SSCAF technology, I use on the cookie implants, which is my own personal device I need to hear. Um, I also use an FM system which I give it to my professor so that I can hear the professor more directly through my cochlear implant. It's like a microphone. Um, and the last accommodation I use almost every day is called CART, C-A-R-T, which stands for Communication Access Real-Time. And so what it is, is a captioning device, that real-time captioning that I can read the transcript on the screen while your professor is talking in real time. Mobility impairments. Hello, my name is Cameron, and I have a disability called cerebral palsy. It affects me because my legs aren't able to work as well as others, and it's not as efficient. In the course of my day as a student, I use technology such as Dragon. And Dragon is basically a speech input system that will write for me as I speak into it, and that helps me become more efficient. This is an example of how I use Dragon. REM sleep. 
is when the body goes through multiple stages. REM sleep has four stages. Hello. My name is Blake. I graduated from the University of Washington Tacoma with a Bachelor of Arts in Urban Studies. I have cerebral palsy, which means I cannot take notes very quickly. For me, quality education includes access to instructors' presentations, notes, or outlines of the lectures so that I have high quality notes from class lectures and discussions. In college, I used this Dynavox to communicate with my peers and professors. I used word predictive software called CodeWriter to speed up my typing on assignments and papers. CodeWriter predicts words in a window as one is typing. My name is Teresa, I'm a high school student, and after high school I plan on attending college and majoring in psychology, and I was born without arms. I use a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse so that I have full accessibility and I'm able to write down notes and catch everything that I need to catch in a more efficient way. Without my arms, I have the keyboard and the mouse on the floor, and then the monitor is just sitting on my table um, in my classroom. When I'm Typing notes, I can usually type pretty fast just because of adrenaline, but um, I'm not fast as fast as someone with arms. My name is John. I have cerebral I use a note that is. I will bring it to my eyes so whatever I look at, it will tell me what I will have to tell somebody what. Hi, my name is Caleb, and I am a sophomore here at the University of Washington, where I am double majoring in Law Society and Justice and Disability Studies, and I want to take that and eventually become a disability rights lawyer, and I was born a congenital amputee missing three of my limbs. I use a Surface Pro 3 as one of my assistive technologies. Most people wouldn't necessarily see that as an assistive technology since it's something that many people in classes have. But for me it is an assistive technology because it's lightweight enough that I can lift it myself, which is very nice. And it has a keyboard that is smaller, which is also something that's nice for me since I do all my typing with a single hand rather than having two hands. Learning Disabilities Hello, I'm Matthew. I have ADD. I have mild ASD, and I've been diagnosed with mild Asperger's. I use CoWriter. It's a word prediction program. There's six words you can choose from by hitting the number key. That it's the word you select out. I would use it mostly in my classes for like very important papers, where I definitely would need to get the grammar correctly, or the words correctly as well, depending because. I struggle with spelling at times. I am Jada. Um, my disability is ADD and dyslexia. So um, with ADD, I have a hard time sitting still for um, a long period of time. I use a document scanner. The scanner helps me by actually reading the content that is on a book instead of um, having read it by yourself. So with this scanner, you set it up and then you um, launch the program that is in the computer. Then 
you can highlight or have it read to you. Even though like um, I'll study them and study them and study, I tend to forget. This will help me by um, making it easier so that I can have the digital copy of it on the computer and have it read to me. Um, and then I can start writing notes along with it as it's like reading it to me. Just depending on your disability, it really like depends how you learn. Um, I'm still definitely trying to learn about my disability um, a little bit more too. Final thoughts. The one thing I would say about assistive technology is that don't be afraid to try it, especially in high school and middle school because there are so many different options out there and there are so many new things that if you just stick with what you have, you might not be doing it the most efficient way possible. So that when you go to college and your future careers, you'll know everything that you need and the best ways to get everything done. My name is Cheryl Bergstaller and I direct Accessible Technology Services at the University of Washington in Seattle. Our services also reach out to our branch campuses in Bothell and Tacoma. It's essential that people with disabilities have access to assistive technology, but that's not the end of the story. In order for them to be effective users of technology, the technology that other people develop, like websites and software and PDF files and so forth, must be designed in such a way that they can use it with their assistive technology. For more information about IT accessibility, consult uw.edu slash accessibility. This video presentation was created with funding from National Science Foundation grant number CNS-1042260. Copyright 2017, University of Washington. Permission is granted to copy these materials for educational, non-commercial purposes, provided the source is acknowledged.